It's now time for Global Insight, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. South Korea's second largest tech company, SK Group, pledged an additional 22 billion US dollars to expand semiconductor production along with other high tech sectors in America. Now, this came during a rare video call between the group's chief, Che Teon, and US President Joe Biden last week. And just a day before the US Congress passed a $280 billion chips and science bill that includes more than $52 billion dedicated to computer chips. Samsung, a week before the announcement, also happened to mention that it may pledge billions more to build 11 additional factories in Texas. Now we discuss the significance of these South Korean firms investing massively into the United States. What are the costs and opportunities? We discuss this today with Yang Yidong, Professor of Business Administration at Yihua Women's University and Dr. J.R. Reagan, CEO of Idea Explorer. Very warm welcome to you both. And my first question going to you, Professor Yang. Now this uh, massive investment, additional investment of $22 billion in the US made by SK Group. Why is it so significant at this point for America? Well, the, first of all, I need to take a look at the breakdown of SK's investment in the United States up to uh, $20 billion. Uh, $15 billion will be focused on semiconductors and uh, $5 billion for the batteries and $2 billion for bio. So BBC, that, which are the acronyms of those advanced technologies, such as in the batteries and bio and the semiconductor chips, those are the major targets of the United States government strategy of friend assuring. Uh, well, the, first of all, we need to understand the significance of the semiconductor industry in the global economy. Well, last year, the semiconductor industry has grown by more than 26% up to uh, $600 billion. And as for the, uh, the current economy, semiconductor takes up about 8% out of the overall GDP and 20% of our overall export. So this is a very important you know, industry for both of the uh, United States and Korea. And why SK decided to invest in the United States? The major reason, as the, uh, you know, the MC mentioned, the United States is trying to materialize their strategy for ensuring. And U.S. Congress is great, greatly cooperating with the strategy of the, uh, the government. So uh, last month, uh, July 26, the United Senate passed the uh, Cheap Plus Act that provides a subsidy up to uh, $52 billion to semiconductor uh, companies. And also, they may provide about 25% of tax deduction for the investment in the semiconductor manufacturing facilities. And uh, I do believe that uh, this strategy, I mean, this decision for SK to invest $22 billion in the United States may cause a dilemma because, you know, they heavily depend on China to, to run their, their manufacturing, the operations. But uh, I think the SK has great plans to overcome this dilemma because China cannot expel all those manufacturing uh, facilities from their own country because China has plans to you know, they acquire up to 70% of semiconductor consumption within their internal uh, manufacturing facilities. So it's not easy for Chinese government to expel all the manufacturing facilities just because they are, you know, to, to cooperate with the United States government. Right, and Dr. Reagan, well, the US Congress having finally passed this CHIPS Plus Act on Thursday, what opportunities lie ahead for the likes of Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix? Yeah, I think that uh, because of the way the supply chains are shaking out around the world, there's really a bifurcating, there's really becoming two choices. Uh, and they call it uh, either a blue supply chain that uh, that's aligned to the West and aligned to the U, uh, U.S. and Europe and a red supply chain which is more aligned to China and Russia and those sorts of things. And I think as those two supply chains shake out, there becomes more opportunity for, particularly for chip makers, as there's more of a reliance on a, a um, uh, a friend shoring or an ecosystem of friends to be able to, to produce those chips. So I think as uh, it may lose out on opportunities for chips and uh, and some digital projects, products in China, it becomes more open to uh, ecosystems and markets in places like the US and Europe that it maybe didn't have such a dominant share before. So I think it, you know, it's a gradual shift. Uh, it's not an immediate uh, shift to different markets, but becomes 
bigger as uh, the, the supply chains get tighter and those ecosystems get uh, closer together. And Professor Young, it's, uh, it's becoming more and more um, clear that it takes a whole ecosystem for these companies to be able to really work on the next generation chips, especially logic chips for South Korean chip makers. But what makes the US such an attractive production base for these South Korean companies? I mean, given the high labor costs on top of the multi-billion dollar investments that we're seeing. Well, it's true that the United States is not, may not be the good place in terms of efficiency, because as for the total cost of ownership, the United States is 28% more expensive than China and 22% more expensive than Korea and Taiwan. But we should keep in mind that uh, still the United States has absolutely significant influence in the advanced technologies such as semiconductors. Uh, well, if you uh, take a look at the ecosystems of semiconductors, well, we can think about the uh, fabulous and the foundry, in other words, the designs uh, versus the manufacturing, you know, the market sectors. So when it comes to uh, the uh, IP, intellectual properties for software or designs or equipments, the United States has a dominant influence up to 57% in terms of total market value. But when it comes to manufacturing, you know, the uh, Taiwan and Korea and Japan, even China is doing a very good job. And in this manufacturing market, the United States has taken up only 13% in terms of overall the market value. So that means the United States needs to keep the balance between the, the in IPs and the design, such as the fabulous, and the manufacturing. And who could be the right partners? Probably their allies, such as Japan and Taiwan and Korea. And the second reason for the attractiveness of the United States as the, for the investment is they have prepared, as we already mentioned, a great, great incentives for the for investment in the, United, in the United States. For example, the Hyundai Motors decided to invest about the $10 billion in the United States, and the $5 billion is about the electric vehicles. And the Georgia state has promised to support about one third for, as a subsidy to support the investment in the facilities of electric vehicles. And besides, they, uh, you know, they had prepared about up to 25% of test deduction, even though the Korea uh, provides only eight or 12% for the tax deduction. So in other words, the Korean companies may feel more and more attraction for the investment uh, either in, uh, in, in the United States compared to the investment in Korea. Uh, and third reason is for the past 20 years, the attractiveness investment in Korea has diminished, you know, by the big scale. In the year 2000, the foreign investment, I mean, overseas the investment, uh, used to be about the 21.5 billion dollars. But last year, in other words, in 20 years, the overseas direct investment has increased more than 25 times. Now, last year, it almost amounted to uh, 552 billion dollars. So lots of companies have decided to invest in overseas rather than in Korea. But Professor Yang, well, the question is, um, so it seems that there are many advantages to uh, moving chip production to the United States for these South Korean companies. But does it make strategic sense, though, um, to do this at the risk of offending China, where uh, most of SK Hynix and Samsung Electronics's uh, chips are made? Well, well, it's not just about the Korean companies who declared to uh, reduce or cancel the investment plans. For example, uh, the recent survey says that even EU, about uh, one quarter of EU companies have decided to uh, reduce or withdraw their investment plans in, in, in China. And uh, Samsung SDI, they uh, closed their two factories for the battery pack uh, you know, facilities and LG Electronics also shut down the two factories in China. Uh, but I don't think China will retaliate all these recent movements of EU or Korean, you know, the companies to reduce or to cancel their investment plans because, as I already said, China has plans to uh, acquire up to 70% of the internal consumption from the internal manufacturing facilities. So it's not easy for Chinese government to expel all those manufacturing facilities of other countries from their the inland because you know, this is the only way to increase their uh, internal uh, occasion rate up to 70 percent 
And the third reason why you know the Ukrainian companies may you know uh, deal with the recent strategy to invest more in the United States because in the third quarter the uh, DRAM price will be reduced by five to ten percent, and then the flash price will be also reduced by eight uh, to thirteen percent. That means due to the lackluster the economic growth in the third quarter. That means you know Ukrainian governments can reduce their production in their, uh, you know, the manufacturing facilities in China. So still a little time to get adapted to this recent and very abrupt changes in international politics and also international supply chain restructuring for particularly for the semiconductors. And Dr. Reagan, uh, the CHIPS Act, uh, the CHIPS bill, it of course earmarks a huge amount of money, uh, a lot of incentives. Uh, tax waivers and all sorts of benefits for companies investing in plants and setting up shop there in the US. So would the US guarantee better market access or any uh, particular benefits in return for Samsung and SK's uh, rather massive investments? Well, I think we're already starting to see the kind of access that they can have. I mean, they're getting all the way to the White House uh, with conversations and being able to influence politics and, uh, and investments. But also, you know, it's the unique structure of the U.S. where there's also investments and tax relief and those sorts of things at the state level. And certainly Samsung is receiving those now as it's uh, investing heavily in Texas. I think the, uh, the CHIPS Act is uh, really geared towards mainly American companies. However, uh, it's opening the doors for chip manufacturers uh, like Samsung and like uh, SK in places that they normally would not have gone into the U.S. And I think that uh, uh, we'll start to see that trickle down to uh, even uh, more uh, Korean companies as they start to build more advanced chips, systems on chips, uh, AI on chips, and those things being uh, manufactured and produced and designed in lots of different locations uh, throughout the U.S. And Dr. Reagan, what strengths do South Korean chip companies have at the moment and how can they further build their leverage? Yeah, certainly uh, it's, it's got a uh, leverage in manufacturing. Uh, it takes a long time to build that uh, ecosystem with academia, with uh, industry, with government. Uh, and it's learned how to do that in a lot of different types of chips. And just recently, uh, Samsung had announced that it has put into production uh, three nanometer chips, which is the first in the world uh, in production. Very difficult to do, requires a lot of expensive machinery, and it's, and it's done that quite effectively. So if you look at the advantage in one sense, it's uh, that manufacturing prowess uh, that it has. But also it's starting to learn how to uh, really put more things on a chip. Uh, advanced uh, artificial intelligence and systems and design those for particular industries um, such as uh, auto, uh, automotive and those sorts of things. So it's got a huge leap ahead in manufacturing. It's got a pretty uh, big leap in terms of uh, its, uh, its design and foundries and all of that means uh, it's catch up for a lot of U.S. companies which is why they're having such success in the U.S. right now. And Professor Yang, the uh, million dollar or rather multi-billion dollar question, do you think South Korea is going to join the chip for alliance? I think so. Well, there could be uh, three major reasons behind this uh, you know, forecast. The first one is still the United States is a king in the semiconductor industry. And the chief four, or FA4, means the, uh, the coalition more United States and Japan, Taiwan and Korea. The United States, again, is the king for the intellectual properties for the design, software, and equipment. And Taiwan and Korea doing a very good job with the manufacturing. And Japan also is one of the very superb, you know, the uh, player in the uh, semiconductor manufacturing equipments. Well, the if, uh, you know, the, the American government has banned the export of the semiconductor equipment for the last 14 nano uh, semiconductors. And uh, the top four players within this uh, semiconductor equipment, they take up more than 70% of market share. And three of them are American companies, and one is a Japan, Japanese firm. So this American government decision makes absolutely critical impact on the export of the uh, semiconductor equipment to China. Without equipment, you cannot manufacture semiconductors that may impact on the Chinese plan to acquire 
up to 70% of semiconductors within the internal uh, manufacturing facilities. Number two, the American government is trying to get closer to uh, Japanese, uh, you know, the uh, companies that may impact on the strategies of uh, Taiwan or the Korean firms. In other words, Japan, Taiwan, and Korea, they are actually the rivals against each other. If American government is getting closer to uh, Japan, that may cause some concerns or threats to uh, Korea and Taiwan. Number three, the American government used to, you know, the sue the Japan a long time ago because of their conflict. So 1985, American government sued the Micron, and that made absolutely critical damage for the Japanese uh, semiconductor firms to uh, reduce their market share from 49% to 10%. So from all this reason, I think the Korean government may have a strong, strong incentive to join this Chief Four coalition. I see. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time today, so this is where we'll have to wrap up. That was Yang Yidong, Professor of Business Administration at Yuhua Women's University, and Dr. Jara Reagan, CEO of Idea, Idea Explorer. Thank you both so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.